Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're doing something completely different that we've never done on this channel before. As many of you may know, um, I love special effects makeup. I've been kind of like dabbling in it since I was in high school. It's one of the biggest reasons I love 80s and like 70s horror movies because of the special effects that goes into them. And today I want to kind of share one of my looks for you guys um, and kind of show you just like a fun little makeup look that you can do with just pretty much any makeup that you would have at your house. This past weekend, I did a photo shoot hosted by Ellen Meets, which is run by a photographer named Rachel, who's just a really awesome, supportive woman who wanted to start a safe, comfortable place for models, photographers, amateur, or pros to be able to come together, take really fun themed photos, and kind of like connect with each other. And I've gone to um, a couple of them now. It's something I'm new to doing. And there was one this past weekend, and it was Halloween themed. And of course, I had to go to it. And I did sort of um, what I like to call a glam to ghoul look for the photo shoot, where I started with just a kind of basic um, beauty makeup and then gradually started to make myself more and more grungy looking with everything being so hectic as it was there I didn't get into my full grunge look like I had anticipated um, which I'm going to be doing for this video but I will throw up any photos that I receive back from photographers into this video so you guys can see and if I don't get too many photos back you can always just check my personal Instagram blonde booty 21 go over there and I'm gonna be posting photos from that photo shoot um, for the next couple of months but without further ado let's get into the look so as the name glam to ghoul would suggest you start with a basic beauty makeup it can be whatever you consider beauty makeup I am still practicing when it comes to like actual beauty makeup I've only really ever done special effects makeup and that's gory and bloody my glam makeup is a little bit more on the basic side just because I am still learning and experimenting with makeup um, so just in the interest of time and not boring you guys I went ahead and did my glam aversion so this is I guess you could say the beginning of the look, step one, is to just kind of get yourself looking pretty. So if you're going to like a Halloween party or something, this could be a really cool, subtle look to do because you can gradually build on and on as the night goes on. And the final look we're going to be going for, which I will put here, is something uh, that kind of just builds off of what you already have on with the glam makeup. And it's just trying to make yourself look more and more um, like sunken in and dead, I guess you could say. So one of the first things you want to do is kind of look at yourself in the mirror and you want to make sure that you understand your bone structure and the way that the shadows play off of your body. So for instance, you want to kind of look at the way that your cheekbones are, you want to be able to look at the shadows on your jaw, the shadowing kind of like up on your forehead, and then down here into the neck and like collarbone area is kind of where we're going to be bringing the whole look. And I have my mirror right here, so if you guys see me kind of look off over here, that's why I'm going to be looking into my mirror to be doing the makeup along with you. And the first thing I like to do is, like I said, kind of figure out the shadowing of my body. And a good way to do that, especially for like the collarbone area, is to take your shoulders and just bring them forward. And doing that brings out your collarbones. And as you guys can see, I've got really good shadowing happening all through here, which is where I'm going to be adding more and more um, darkness to kind of make that more prominent, to make me look more sunken. I'm also going to be adding some down in between the chest to kind of bring it up here and then you want to get through the neck so you um, for the neck if I stretch my neck out you can see right in here how these lines where the veins and the tendons are kind of go up so I also want to be using that as well as kind of like one of my guidelines and you're gonna be adding stuff onto the jaw the nose a little bit on the crease of the mouth inside the eyes and then up in the forehead all right so I got my hair out of my face now for the sunken in features I'm going to just be using an eyeshadow palette like I said you this is something that you don't have to have a lot of like special effects makeup to do so I like to use this matte shadow palette that I have especially these colors in here I want something that sort of close to my skin tone but darker because like I said I'm going to be making it into shadows so it's almost like bronzing um, different parts of your body and you can use glitter shadows if you'd like I personally only like to use those towards the end as like accents I don't want the entire shadowed look to be glittery I want to be able to have kind of like that matte more subtle look but if you guys want to go with glitter go with glitter who am I to tell you not to the movies that kind of utilize this like subtle change into more of like a grungy look are a lot of possession movies you see stuff like this um there's the movie the the possession that came out in 2012 and it's about a girl who finds a box that has a bunch of like possessed items in it and she like wears I think there's like a ring in there that she like wears and it starts to um, just make her possessed but she slowly starts to just notice that she gets like 
dirt. It looks like dirt that's like in the crease of her nose, but she can't get it to come off. And it starts to spread and it like goes into her eyes and it slowly like her features just get more and more sunken looking. Um, another movie, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, you see that as well where the features start to get more and more darkened as the movie goes on and the person becomes more possessed. So those are some movies that you can kind of look at for like inspiration on different looks that you can go with and the extremes of which you could take this makeup. So I've got my eyeshadow palette here and like I said I kind of want to dip into these colors here. I'm going to start with the lighter one and just like the movie um, The Possession what we're going to do is we're going to start just kind of darkening the creases in our nose. So if you just gently take that and just sort of darken up in there. And you do want to be subtle with it at first, you don't want to go too extreme too fast. And if you feel like you went too dark, you could take like your foundation sponge or like a powder brush and sort of just go back in to kind of clear up some. But now you see like I've just darkened up my nose a little bit and it already makes my nose look more sunken in. So for phase two of this look, I would darken my nose and my eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that as well. So this would be sort of like the phase one of the look. It's very, very subtle. Like I said, this is more about a subtle transition versus um, doing something super extreme. And if you're at a like Halloween party or you're kind of somewhere that you have the ability to sneak off to the bathroom, this could be a really cool look to slowly change your costume as the day goes on. So like if you started the party kind of like with this glam look and then you go to the bathroom and you just add a little bit of the shadows there and it can kind of create a subtle change in your appearance and then by the end of the night you'd be like full form ghoul. So now we're going to go a little bit more exaggerated with this. We're going to take it into the jaw, kind of up into the forehead, and then darken up a little bit more in the nose and the eye area. So now I'm going to start kind of dipping in more into the darker color. And what I like to do once I've applied the shadow and I feel like it might be a bit too dark or I just want to spread it out a little bit more, I'll just take a clean brush and sort of just go back in and kind of help feather it out and make sure that I don't have like harsh lines and I'm sort of following the shadows of my face. So you can just kind of do that to um, soften everything up if you go a little harsh on like the first round. And then with the jaw, you kind of want to go just under your jawline because you can see you already have natural shadowing from your jaw. So you wanna kinda utilize that and just accent it a little bit more. So you can already see it's making my jawline just look a little like shorter. It doesn't give me as much life in my like jaw and neck, which is what we want because we're you know trying not to look alive. And you can bring it kinda like up into the temples and the hairline. Just really like any place on the face that you would already like apply bronzer, you can sort of just darken it a little bit. But think about the way that your skull is. While I know this isn't a totally accurate human skull, you can always see like people's cheekbones, the way that they sink in right where like the dimples are, and then places like up in here that have more of a sunken look to them, just that's how your skull is. So you can utilize those places and that's where you want to darken up. Because like whenever someone passes away and like the fat and the muscle starts to break away on their body and you know their skin starts to slowly sink in, those are the areas that get really exaggerated and sunk. And then same thing, um, if you start to feel like maybe you went a little too heavy or you want to lighten it up, you don't want to go that dark yet, just take your, I just take the um, sponge I used with the foundation, which still has a little bit of foundation in it, still a little bit damp, and I just go through and just soften those areas. But now you can see that my face is starting to have more of a sunken look to it. So this would be kind of like step three. So this would be maybe like your second bathroom break, or this could even be step uh, two for you if you want to go ahead and get a little bit more into it versus a subtle change. This could be a really good next step. So now I want to start bringing it kind of down into the chest and the collarbone area. So you can still use like your big brush if you'd like, or you can use something a little bit more subtle. Um, it's really up to you. I prefer to use the big brush for like the chest area, and then once we're kind of closer to the end because I want to keep the shadowing sort of light in the beginning so I like to use just sort of like a, a eye like a bigger eyeshadow brush but I'm gonna start with that lighter color first since this is the first time we're bringing anything down into our chest I don't want to go too heavy too quickly but I'm just sinking pushing my shoulders forward so I can exaggerate the bones 
and just sort of bring the shadow in. And then when I release my shoulders, you can see the line. It's kind of harsh at first. I like to diffuse it after I've um, applied the shadow. I want to go ahead and make sure I get the shadowing where I need it. And then I can go through and diffuse in a second. But right now, I just want to make sure I'm getting in those areas. As you can see, I'm outlining just the shadowy parts when I push my shoulders forward like this. And I'm also just going to hit that little V in my neck. Just because the neck would also get skinnier along with the rest of the body. You don't want to have like your neck looking fine while the rest of you looks really sunken in. So you can even, when you lift up and you see where that V goes, kind of tracing where your throat is. Just lightly. And then I know this looks a little bit intense right now, so you can take the bigger brush and kind of like diffuse out. Just sort of soften everything. And then I like to take the brush and just hit sort of in the chest here. I have a naturally sunken sternum. It's a medical problem apparently that can actually cause like medical issues. I've never had any with it. I just have a really big gap in between my boobs. Um, so I already have pretty good shadowing down in there, so I don't need to do too much shadowing to make it look more sunken than it already is. Um, but if you're someone who doesn't have a sunken sternum, then you can kind of add the shadow in there as well. Men or women, it doesn't matter if you have boobs or not, you can add that in there to kind of just bring everything together. Especially if your costume or whatever you're wearing does show more of the chest, you want to make sure what you're showing is cohesive in its look. So this would kind of be like step three or four, depending on how subtle you want to go in the beginning. So you see we're starting to sink in those features in here. We are getting under the jaw and bringing it down into the chest area. And if you're unhappy with like the way that the shadowing is, maybe you don't like how harsh it looks still, once again, just take that sponge, take whatever you use to put your foundation on and just sort of soften everything up. This can be a completely subtle or completely obvious look. It's definitely up to you and just what you're trying to go for. But this you could say would be step three or four, depending on where you are. So now we're going to go big. We're gonna start doing more exaggerated features. Um, this is going to be the second to last phase I'm going to show you guys. Um, so this is like maybe mid party, people have seen your look, they're like, oh, you weren't like that when I first saw you, you look so good. And you're like, yeah, I know. And then it's your time for like your big reveal where you come out like full force. So what I'm gonna start doing is going into kind of like mixing these two, more of the gray and that darker brown. I don't wanna hit the black just yet, just because it can be kind of unforgiving and you don't wanna to be too much too soon. So I'm just gonna start darkening up in these areas. And I'm gonna start now bringing it like under the cheekbone, really giving my jaw more prominence to show how emancipated I am. I'm gonna bring it under my jaw a little bit more, get that a little darker. And then I'm gonna go back to my smaller shadow brush and now I'm gonna start taking those darker colors into the creases of my nose. And I'm gonna stick more with the gray for up into my eye. Cause I really wanna darken those creases of my eyes and really make them look more sunken. And then I'm just going to sort of blend it into the pre-existing shadow that I have. And then I'm gonna take a cleaner brush and sort of just feather it out so it's not too harsh. But now I've really got that sunken look into my eyes and then into my nose. And then what you can do as well is start taking more of like the gray, darker colors and even bringing them into those lines that are in your mouth. So like when you open your mouth, how you can see where your um, lips and cheeks kind of like have that divot. That's what you want to start exaggerating now. And I know it looks crazy when you first do it and that's kind of why you don't want to go too heavy. And then you want to, I like to just take like a bigger brush and like always just diffuse. And if I feel like maybe that line's still a bit harsh, just go in with my sponge. Help soften it. And now I want to kind of go a little bit into the chin, right where I have that natural little arch right here where the shadow is. And just sort of darken that up as well. 
So now it's really just about anywhere on your face that you get natural shadowing or you can see like where your bone structure is, you want to start exaggerating that. So like I said, it's kind of like putting on your bronzer, but heavily. <laughs> So now my face has that good sunken look, so I want to start going now into more of the body and sort of darkening up in there. And pushing my shoulders forward so I can still see. And this is also just good to know for um, like theater. With theater makeups, you have to exaggerate the features, especially um, because a lot of times there aren't screens to show what's happening on stage. So people in the way back wouldn't really be able to see your features. So like if you have like an old age makeup, um, you have to really exaggerate the features so that under the harsh stage lighting and from people who are far away, they'd still be able to see and understand that, oh, this is like an old age makeup. So this is even just something you can utilize in that sense of if you do like theater makeups or you're kind of doing something, anything like that where you're on a stage that people are gonna be far away. The more exaggerated your makeup is, the easier it's going to be for people who are far away to be able to see and understand what's happening. And another place I like to kind of hit on the throat I were, if I had an Adam's apple, kind of where that would be. And you can see, I, I don't know if you can tell just with the camera, but I have a natural crease in here. A lot of people have natural creases in their necks, you know, when you get like a double chin and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, there's kind of like a little bit of natural creasing that happens in the chin area and under the neck. Um, don't shy away from it. I know people don't like to accentuate those creases, but if you were rotting away, those creases would definitely show more. Now I'm darkening up into the sternum and kind of bringing the color into here. And now I'm also kind of using my bigger brush and sort of just lightly kind of going away from where I started because now I want to really bring in that shadowing and that like sickly look. So we kind of just fuse out and make everything look more sunken. It starts to really give you that good dead look. And also I just wanna take a um, just a regular eyeliner pencil and I wanna start darkening just under my eyes and just kinda of get my eyes more of a darker look and I'm gonna darken up my lips as well. And I'm also gonna start bringing more of the shadow under my eyes. Because with anything in life, whenever you're stressed or sleepy, maybe you didn't get a lot of sleep, you're sick or you know starving, um, you see it in people's under eyes. Your under eyes tell a lot about people, more than uh, most of us want. But I'm gonna start just darkening that up and I'm diffusing because I went a little bit too heavy, but just sort of taking lighter color, like that lighter brown, keeping that sort of as like the base and then building the darker colors, like the gray and stuff underneath. So now just with the eyeliner underneath and then the darkening up under my eyes, you can sort of see that sunken look is really starting to come out. And I think I might dip a little bit hesitantly into that black and start really darkening more into my eyes. I love a good sunken eye look. I'm just packing that in there and I might take a little bit of what's left and just a couple of little taps under my nose. Like I said, black is very unforgiving. So you don't want to go too heavy too quickly on it. But I like to kind of place it in areas. I want to just better accentuate and just darken up. And then once I have sort of all the places, you can see where I just sort of marked where I want to put more black. And then I'm just gonna take this brush and sort of just fuse it out. But now that my features are really starting to get sunken, I'm starting to get more of that dead look. So I'm gonna take a little bit of black on this powder brush as well. And now I'll start just going more into the chest and just really darkening up. Like I said, this is pretty much, this could be your last phase, depending on just what materials you have available to you. I'm gonna do one more phase after this. Um, but this is kind of like the final, you know, party's really kicking off, everyone's there, and now you really wanna come full costume. So. This is where you can kind of just take yourself into the bathroom real fast and just throw on some extra blush. I'm kind of doing more big strokes on my throat because you can see it really helps accentuate that. And you can even bring it kind of like back here. Just make sure that, you know, depending on how your hair is, I would naturally, I would probably have my hair down for a look like this. 
so I wouldn't need to hit the sides and backs of my neck as much. Um, but if you have like shorter hair, your hair is going to be up. Um, definitely make sure you hit sort of that side and you can even sort of hit the backs um, of your traps as well if you're feeling that, it's totally up to you. I'm just gonna sort of couple more dark touches, really get that shadowing in here. And what I'll do, I'll actually show you guys what it would look like to do more dead looking lips versus like just black and darkened lips. We'll start with the dead ones. Um, it's easier to go from light to dark than dark to light. So I don't actually have like white lipstick or like anything um, that's meant for your lips that's white, but I have a lot of my FX makeups which are just good for all over the face. So I'm just going to use just like a white crayon essentially that's meant for your face. And I'm going to sort of start in the middle and then phase it out. But what I wanna do first is get just a little bit of a darker color on my lips. So I'm gonna take my black, my little <laughs> Halloween black lipstick and sort of just do like very lightly over top because you do want to have like a base darker color. And I'm gonna just sort of keep it in the corners. And then I'm gonna take the white and really draw that on. And I do have lip color on already that's pinkish. You can maybe sort of kind of see uh, this turning a little bit pink. Because I'm building on top of the look I already did, I'm not going to take off my lip color. I want to keep it on there. But if you don't want to mix them or maybe like you don't have products that mix well together, feel free to take off the lips. It might even be easier to start with just a bare lip and then kind of build on just depending on what products you have. Then I'm just going to take a lip brush and sort of just blend these together. So this is more of a lighter look. It's more technically accurate in the sense as what would happen to someone if they are dead. You do lose all the color in your lips and you can add like hints of like purples or blues here to show just sort of that um, discoloration that you get with like dead skin and dead cells. And I'm not going to go too far into it because I do want to go more dark with my lips. Like I prefer to go darker with my lips, especially when my whole face is dark, just because I feel like it's mm, just kind of blends better together. Right now, I feel like the white lips are just very like I have white lips. Um, so it's not my personal favorite but it's definitely an option if you want to go more on that like accuracy route but what I like to do is I'm gonna put just like a little bit of red in like the middle and then really put the black on the outer parts of my lips and then blend those together Now things like liquid lips are um, easier to blend together. You can even sometimes mix in like cream eyeshadows and stuff with those as well. Uh, I don't have a lot of like good nice expensive makeup because I don't wear it very often um, so I'm kind of just utilizing what I have but there are tons of products that make that a lot easier because this blend is not as clean as and crisp as I'd like it to be but that's mainly because I don't just have the products that are meant for something like that um, but this is kind of what it would look like with a dark lip look like I said my personal preference I like this a lot better um, but if you want to go with the lighter lips or even want to do like pure white lips to have like a pop of contrast that would look really cool so this could technically be the end of your look just darkening all your features um, you can add more in there as you need to if you're in like a low light party that maybe it was only using like you know accent lighting darkening the features would definitely be beneficial because it would be easier to see but if you're in like a well lit area you don't need to go super dark if you don't want to it totally depends maybe if your costume has like a hood or something you'd want to go a little darker so you can really accentuate your features but this technically could be where you stop but if you have something like fake blood or contacts that you can utilize this would definitely be a time to do so now I know that this whole look has been more kind of like a sunken dead look and you wouldn't really have like gashes or blood um, but I like to sort of add sometimes like a bleeding nose or even just like a little dribble out of the corner of my mouth or even sort of make it look like my lip has been bloodied or maybe I ate something bloody. So for this look, I think I want to just do like maybe like a little bit of blood running out of my nose and then maybe a little bit of blood on my lips. We'll kind of see. But um, you can just take something as simple as just a small tube of blood. And then I have uh, stipple sponges. These are sponges that you can get um, in big squares, small squares. I cut them to the size that I need. These are really good for stippling, um, which I use like when I'm doing bruising and stuff like that, when you kind of want to subtly, gradually build. And it's also really good for blood because it gives you that splattery kind of, um, you know, not super clean look. Because whenever it comes to blood being a liquid, it does splatter and get everywhere. So this kind of gives you more of a natural bloody look. But I like to just kind of put a little bit of blood on my stipple sponge and then start with whatever nostril I'm gonna kind of go for and stick it up in my nose a little bit because you know the bloody nose starts from the nose 
So you can keep it some super subtle like this even if you wanted to and just sort of keep it up into your nose or you can start bringing it down. So this looks like, you know, maybe you've had the bloody nose for a little while and it's sort of just you've kind of been wiping at it a little bit. Or another thing that you can do is if you put some of the blood onto something like a toothpick or just something that has a small end to it and you can kind of put it on there and make it look like it's been running. I even have fake blood that has a little spray nozzle, so I could even just spray up into my nose and let it naturally drip. Kind of get it a good drip in there and then just kind of rotate my head. If I want it to run down into my mouth, you know, you can kind of manipulate a little bit. I try not to touch it too much with my fingers because I don't want to get like fingerprints in it. Um, but that's just a way to sort of bloody up your look if you want something a little more gory. Um, Mm, the fake blood never tastes good. <laughs> but this is just a good way to kind of get like, a little bit more gore if you're looking for something like that and you don't want to just keep it subtle. Um, so just like a little bit of blood. I try not to go too far with the blood because you can get very out of hand very fast. You know, the only other thing I would do with blood is maybe a little bit of stippling here, for example, like a little bit. Just to sort of make it look like maybe I've had something or someone a little bloody. But something super subtle like that kind of goes with your subtlety of your overall look in general. So this could be where you stop. I have colored contacts, so whenever I do something like this, I like to finish with a colored contact. And there's two different ways that you can kind of approach it. You can do something like this, where it's just one color contact and one natural contact. This throws people off. It's really fun to do at parties. Um, this could be really funny too if you show up with your natural eye color and then like come out of the bathroom like two hours into the party and just like oh my God, everyone's like, oh my god, what happened to your eyes? Um, so yeah, this is like one way that you can kind of finish the look if you don't want to do two contacts. Um, or you can do both. So this would be our final look, um, our glam to ghoul, flashback to the glam, and now here to the ghoul. Depending on your costume, um, like you can see sort of the sunken chest features, some of them aren't as prominent because of the cape I chose. Um, but you know, it's up to you whenever you're wearing. I like to do this just because of like, maybe it's the middle of the party and I take my cape off, I still have the um, makeup done, I still have a completed look. But sometimes the cape just kind of gives you that final little flair that you need. But I hope you guys enjoyed this little special effects uh, tutorial. I'm kind of planning on doing a little bit more, especially as we get closer to Halloween, of these subtle looks, kind of looks that anyone could do. I'm thinking next I want to show different bruising and the way to make yourself just a quick beat up makeup is a really good, quick, easy way to do something for a Halloween party if you need a last minute idea. So um, if you have any ideas of makeup looks you'd want to see, just let me know down below in the comments or head over to my Instagram, what a horror. I'll be making a post about this video as well. But as always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you want to see more videos, I put out new videos every Friday. And until next time, stay spooky.